Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to have the relaxing mixed media painting tutorial. For this tutorial you would need a hot pressed 300 gsm watercolor paper. Just make sure that if you're using something it's thick enough to handle water. You would need a pencil which becomes a watercolor pencil when it dilutes with water. We will also need watercolor pencils for this tutorial, for the second part of it. And we will use watercolor for the first part of this tutorial. And any watercolor would work. This is the one that I have, but you guys can go ahead and use whatever you have on hand. You will need some brushes, watercolor brushes. So I've got sort of a medium size and a smaller one, uh, a round brushes, and also um, some wash paint to finish things uh, with. So all the little white highlights that we will be applying afterwards would be done with gouache. So before we start doing anything, we need to uh, pay attention to what our subject or object looks like. You might find that studying the color or uh, studying the transitions of color especially because this rose is a little bit aged. See, it's sort of drying up on the edges there. You can see that you've got a really dark, sort of a purple, almost like color blue. And then you've got, you know, a little bit of the pink that's going into the white. These are very, very important things to observe. Now, the reason why I decided to choose this rose is because I already have a beginner tutorial on mixed media how to draw roses and those roses are just very cute roses but I thought there is something really beautiful about this sort of a rose that's half dry just because of the color changes you know spots like this you wouldn't get them you know with a very um, very new very bright rose so that's, I think, what would make this tutorial a little bit different from the previous ones that I've done. Uh, you can just follow with me along or you can always use your own flower and just try to um, sort of uh, apply all the rules and all the things that I'm um, telling you here in this tutorial to your own object. So, first thing that you want to do is you want to find an angle that suits you, suits what you want to see or what you want to show. So because, as I said, I quite like these dried up colors, you know, and those color variations that are happening there, I'm going to sort of position it like that somewhat and try and draw it. For drawing, I'm going to use this very special pencil and this pencil looks like a regular pencil, but if you add water to it, it becomes a watercolor paint. So what I will do is I will link the materials that I can find. If I can find them online somewhere, I will link them in the description under the video so you guys can check those out. Okay, so the first thing I want to start with, just create a few um, lines and things to build my object and the first thing I'm gonna go with will be the stem because that will just sort of help me position the flower on the page and then the green petals and same with, with the rose itself just a very vague very very sort of a soft sketch Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look a little bit more at all the shapes and first I'm going to use this this sort of a point here that I will look at. So the reason why I want to start working with this part there is because it's like a joining part, you know, so it, it, it's something that holds together this um, part of the object and this part of the object. So I'm just going to sketch these things through. Uh, I apologize if it's hard to see through the lens of the camera but I do want to keep these light because I don't want to bring too much darkness onto the some areas that I might like to have really nice and bright. 
some petals, I mean some leaves, and some more leaves. So make sure whenever you draw you always pay a lot of attention to all the little edges and little textures because it's it's really important. That's why having a real object in front of you always really really pays off compared to working from a photograph. I mean working from a photograph is your next best thing but this, the real thing, is always better. Okay, so next I'm going to go and do a very similar detailed thing here with the petals. It's quite important to get a lot of detail in as much as you can. You know, work towards what you what you'd like to um, achieve in your artwork. So these are my overall sort of sketches of the petals and so on. Now what I will do as well is put a photograph of this image onto my Patreon page for my patrons, those of you guys who are watching, just in case you want to follow along and this is too fiddly for you, you can work by looking at the image rather than the, the rose. So guys, just to give you a heads up, um, I'm holding the flower like this and you're looking at it from the top, I'm looking at it from the side. So. It's a, a little bit different the viewpoint that I'm seeing to what you're seeing. So what I'm seeing is you can see here lots of CC seeing in those sentences, but you know what I mean. Okay, I will start with a really sort of a light and very soft wash. And for that I'm going to get a little bit of um, Clinocridon magenta paper. By the way, my paper is lying flat on the table. For some techniques you want it to be a little bit upright and there's a certain angle that's the most comfortable but for this one you want it to be flat. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a really really light light wash of this pretty much like water and add a little bit more of the color. Now this color is from Quar, and you can see how well it distributes itself through water. And now I'm going to move on to the next petal and do the same thing. First applying water and then color. And I'm just using this pure color, I'm not mixing it with anything. Just to start off with, just like that. Here I'm going to avoid these green areas and just focus on the pink. One thing to remember about watercolor is that it always gets light and shade when it dries. So if you are wondering if the colors are too dark, just remember that in mind. Just keep that in mind. On this big petal here, again, I am I'm going to apply some water first and then let the paint do its work and then play with it and move it if I need to or just leave it as is if that suits as well. Now next if you look quite closely you will see that there is a little bit of warmth going through here so that warmth is more of the ochre kind of a warmth. It's not the bright, bright yellow. It's more of a, just that sort of a softer yellow and I think partly it is because this rose is not really fresh. Although it could have had that color as well, I can't remember to be honest. And then just adding a little bit of that color through and a bit of that color through here as well. So you can see how it's getting together now. Now uh, one more thing I'm going to do before moving on to other parts is I'm going to use a dark color, you know, more of that sort of a purplier, bluer sort of a shade. So for that I'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine blue with Hunacridon purple 
as I said, a lot of the materials that if I find them online, I will link them down below so you can have a look. That's the thing with core colors, they're so rich, so strong. It's a great thing, but you have to you have to keep on top of that. So what I'm doing here now is I'm kind of um, marking a little bit of that shape there that I drew with the pencil first. Now I'm going over with those shadows and those little dried up edges and things like that. I don't want to overpower it, so that's why I'm working quite lightly. But that should be done, nonetheless. Always look at the texture. Whatever the texture is, this is what you should be looking at. Textures are neglected by so many people when they draw and they paint. And you can see this is a great brush. I can keep going and going without having to reload it with paint. It holds so much and it distributes it so nicely as well. I'm going to leave that to dry. So this is my underpainting done. So now I'm going to do an underpainting on the green part as well. So for that I'm going to mix a little bit of olive green with some ochre and maybe just a little bit of that purple in there just to sort of shade it down a little bit. Okay so I'm gonna go and and apply some of the shadows, some of the darker colors. Remember with watercolor you always want to make sure that you're working with light shades, not dark ones. You can always add another layer and it's really hard to completely get rid of color, even though this is going to be a bit of a mixed media still. I'm going to leave that one to dry and now work. that little one. Very light colors. Next I'm going to add sort of a zingier greens, a little bit brighter. Um, nothing too like extraordinarily bright like green gold, but just a little bit of Hooker's green mixed with a bit of yellow ochre and just go over some of the other parts and some of the areas that I've already painted. You see this technique here that I'm doing? That is called glazing. When you go over with one color, over the previously painted ones, once they dry. Some people love it, some people work a lot of wet on wet. But if you're interested, check out my other YouTube videos um, for different painting styles and things like that. Also, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to check out my Patreon page, where for just $2 a month you can support this channel. And just for $8 a month you can view all the extra videos and things like that. Also make sure to check out different tiers because I have some like one-on-one -on -one consultations available. I also have draws like monthly draws that patrons go into to win sketches that I do here. Like this sketch, this sketch will be going into the drawer. Okay so here I'm just going to go very lightly and add a little bit more ochre and even a little bit of um, Hunts the yellow just a tiny little bit and just add it in a little bit for now. So at this stage I'm going to leave that and while that is drying I'm going to go back to the painting of the petals. Petals are already falling off. At this stage I'm going to go in for a stronger color, uh, a color that I will mix using quinacridone magenta but also a little bit of scarlet red to warm it up a little bit. Don't really see that much warmth 
through there but it is there and if I'm only going to focus on the blues and purples and things it'll end up being too blue let's have a look I'll start with this one now I'm not applying water on all of the flower but just in some areas and now soften all of this like that okay now I'm going to premix a shadow color and just apply a little bit of the shadow on the bottom that would give a 3D look to it for the shadow color I'm going to use ultramarine blue and some burnt umber you want to make sure that you've got very even amounts of one and the other to create a very neutral color okay so here I'm going to so anything that's in shadow can be darkened substantially with this shadow color that we've just mixed and there's quite a bit of shadow in here as well I'm going to do same thing and go over with the same color over these green bits as well the reason why it's so important to have objects in front of you or at least images if you don't have objects is because we tend to think that we know what the subject looks like but you actually don't you don't remember 70 percent about it you'd probably remember an overall shape a color but you would not remember all the different variations on the shape you would not remember all the different color combinations and color transitions and changes and so on and so on also you need something to be able to observe the shadow and the light and so on okay so now that I've done the shadow I'm going to go in and start adding you know that sort of a darker purpley color but this time I'm going to add a little bit of brown to it and I'm going to use Van Dyke brown you see that instantly it instantly gives you that sort of a dried up uh, rose petal color just mixing those two so for the smaller brush I will use this um, Da Vinci Kalinsky size 3 around brush and I'm gonna start with this one this time and you see that's the thing the edges those dried up edges are so so vivid in color even though the rose itself when it's really fresh and no dried up like this it's usually quite light you don't get that sort of thing going but those dried up little petals that's what you would see now to this color I'm going to add a little bit of dark sand purple what that would do is I would deepen it even more so it's just in some areas you really if you really want to build it up that's what you go for it's almost like an outline those dried up edges you can see that we've got the sort of the very light colors we've got some of the dark colors as well so now what we're going to do is to start using watercolor pencils the ones that I have are Faber Castell so again I will see if I can find any um, packs or anything like this and add them under the video but this is the cool thing about using these is that you can use them as pencils and add as much of the definition or color variations as you'd like but you can also use them to create this beautiful petal like texture you can do with a brush as well and I do sometimes but just for the sake of this mixed media tutorial I think we can use that for a change um, and you can always add water and they will run like watercolor so that's the beauty of uh, I actually have a, um, a tutorial on watercolor pencils so if you are wanting to choose which ones to get sorry guys I didn't realize but my camera has cut out for a little bit I didn't miss much 
but you know how I was using um, the pencil here, which is light uh, magenta. I also used in the same way fuchsia and middle pink as well to get to this intensity. So pretty much very similar. So just going over it. So now I'm going to go for brown color. Okay, so um, just going over some of the brown, some of the darker colors and creating a little bit more of the intensity. The moment this is looking reasonably nice and pale and then we've got the darkness but I just want to bring some of that darkness in a little bit more and also I would want to bring in more of the color variations you know like some yellowy colors and so on And across on this side, I'm going to add the shadow with a bit more blue. So this is Helio Blue Reddish. So just a bit more of that blue over the brown creates that sort of a cool shadow look. Now back to brown. And this is just um, Burnt Umber Brown. Okay, so here I'm going to add a little bit more of these sort of like almost folds, you know, that are dry, drying up on there. Now, if this flower was very fresh, you probably wouldn't get as much of these darker shaded colors. But because it is, Okay, now I'm going to add some more of the blue in the areas where I feel that I need some cooler, but also quite dark sort of shade. These are so lovely and creamy, these pencils. And now I'm also going to go for a little bit of a different brown shade, just to add some of the you know those little dried up bits here and here and then some through the other petals quite dry as well uh, at the same time I'm gonna add some of the yellow ochre just to really intensify that you know patch and now I'm gonna add a little bit of green because I can see some really light really soft sort of a pale green I'm barely touching the paper with this pencil just going really really gentle also remember that a combination of green and red produces more of a brownish shade which is really good for this um, artwork because there's lots of browns in that pink. I'm also going to add some of this green on the greens and we need to start looking at the greens as well now because we kind of have neglected them. Sorry little greens, we didn't mean to. We just got too carried away with the petals. Okay, there is one thing missing though and that's not enough contrast here. Can you see the difference between these petals where we've got a lot of contrast, we've got really beautifully saturated colors but this one here, that's very pale. So I'm actually going to add a bit of yellow through the petals, just a little bit and also through here. Let's look at some more shadow colors. Now for shadow colors I'm going to go for this indigo blue. It's not black but it's quite dark. You see now we're getting the beautiful shadow happening there. It 
a very intense color this one yet called dark indigo adding in a bit of shadow and a little bit more definition let's have a look at the petals do we have any dark shadows there a little bit a little bit of darkness on the leaves this edge also has quite a bit of um, sort of a darker almost looks like an outline it, perhaps it's also because the flower has been drying up a bit um, but I think it's quite beautiful and also a little bit of brown in there I can see from where I'm looking at it now this little twisted leaf as well and this one it's just a bit of a um, sort of darker color through the air. Okay, so now that we've done those shadows, let's have a look. Let's add some more green. Always pay attention to all the little things, you know, the way these things join and what happens and all that. Now I'm also going to go in with the, uh, the very strong, almost browny red. And you can see how there are some little sort of specks of that red going through there. Actually, if you ever are around any dark red roses, have a look at the actual greenery, you'll find so much red present in there. So that's why when you are drawing um, or painting roses, always remember to add more red into the leaves, into the greenery. Even if it's not obvious, it's there. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of water on the edges. Just to give it that, you know, the very detailed edge. So you see as the uh, watercolor pencils melt, they become more richer in color. It's quite fun working with them. They're also less fuss as well, like if you want to do a whole painting with just using watercolor pencils. You can take them with you if you're going somewhere. You just need a bit of water and a brush. And you're done. And you don't even need to, like what I'm doing now, you don't really have to do it. You can if you want to. But you can use them as pencils as well, so they're very versatile. So yeah, if you are considering, uh, you know, getting or not getting watercolor pencils, watch the video. I will link it somewhere, like, around. Um, so you can have a look. I do already a big test on different colors and explain a lot of things about use and tips and different ideas. I think these ridges, you know, because these are not very fresh roses. And same thing through all of these petals. Now you guys, I don't know what's up with my camera, but it's cut out again a little bit. So what I've done so far is I have just gone and intensified the color a little bit. Nothing new from what I was doing before I just um, used this pencil just to go over a little bit more and just add a little bit more of the richness of color pretty much until I've realized that it's cut off. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a little bit more color. Uh, a little bit more of that ochre's green onto the leaves. So now I'm just going and using watercolor over the pencils, and just in some areas. I'm not going to do it everywhere. In some areas where I just really want that green to be very grassy and very bright. 
not long now it's almost it's almost there we just need to use one more ingredient well no not ingredient um, one more medium this is Hansa yellow just a little bit of that yellowy sort of a thing going on now, now I'm going to use a little bit of white watercolor pencil and then I'm going to use some white gouache as well okay so with white pencil what I want to do is see if you look here if you look closely you'll see that some areas sort of almost like have these really fine little ridges and you can't create that by just leaving white paper it just wouldn't work you know for that for that sort of a textured look so here I'm using some white pencil over I hope um, the camera is picking up what I can see in real life because in real life it really does create that 3D sort of a surface look um, it's quite um, it's quite good to add just little textures here and there with the white but it's better to leave it till end so that they stand out the most these little highlighted areas it can go over watercolor or over watercolor pencil okay and I'm also going to use this color and this is um, beige or red so this color is just to sort of soften and also give it a little bit of that because it's sort of like a gray pink sort of to make it a little bit more aged and so on I'll just put a little bit of that through okay so now is time for another um, ingredient to this recipe and that's um, gouache now white gouache is perfect for bringing out some areas that you want to stand out like light areas also great for adding some of the details because it's so opaque uh, which means it covers the paper really well it doesn't let much color through it's perfect for little details like that now if you are a beginner you might also want to use it for cleaning up some things if you forgot to leave some white areas and so on uh, when you work with watercolor but just remember then it makes it a mixed media rather than a watercolor but it's great for bringing in those highlights and because these are little dried up leaves they have these sort of textured veins and things like that so it can be really good for uh, that sort of a thing you know those little holes where the petal was broken through that's that's the beauty of mixed media you are not restricted by any rules like for example if this was pure watercolor then this would be a no-no but that's the beauty of putting everything together and just creating something where you just enjoy looking at it and working with it rather than being restricted I think that's about it so just a little bit on here as well and because gouache is water mixable what happens is that as it dries it sort of mixes a little bit in with the previous color so you can you can create these really beautiful um, shades without even trying and just adding some here and there and it really um, creates and picks the work up quite a bit so just adding some highlights with gouache I think that should be sufficient enough so I think now it's pretty much done so I would like to say thank you so much guys 
for watching this video, for painting with me. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my Patreon page where you can see all the extra videos and tutorials, some really long ones, really in-depth things. And I would also like to say a big, 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 huge thank you to everyone who is supporting me there already because a lot of these videos that are here on YouTube available for everyone to see will not be available if it wasn't for these people's support. So please go over there and check it out. And you might find something really interesting for yourself as well. So as always, thank you very much for keeping me company. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely day.